Hi, Robin Beaumont here. What I'd like to do this time is show you how to import what's a thing called a library. A thing called a library is an app. Um, R has over 1,000 apps, you could say, um, written by very famous people all around the world for various things. There's epidemiology apps, there's um, apps to do with oil field statistics work, what have you. Right, so to do install an application which we call a package, uh, we should type install package, give the name of the package, here our command is the one we're going to install, which gives us a graphical front end. Notice the uppercase R, and then we type in dependencies true. Why we put that in is because the R commander package has a large number of other packages it needs to run successfully. Um, if you just typed R commander and installed that package, you'd not probably get it to run. So you must make sure you put the dependencies equals true in afterwards when you install a package. Once you've done that, it asks you where you want to get the package from. So I come from the UK, so I'm going to choose London. There we go. Because um, I've installed most of the other packages, it actually does this quite quickly on my machine, but you'd find probably on yours, a new R installation, you install perhaps 34 key very small packages, often less than a tenth of a megabyte. There we are. So now we have R commander installed. Um, to actually run it in R, you actually type one more command, which is a library with the name of the library. There we are, library, bracket. We don't need to put in any quotes this time, it's just R, C, M, D, R. Notice that I've made sure I uh, put in the uppercase R. And then we get the window, the R commander window, which is a bit like a graphical front end to R. Notice it has a large number of menus, carry out various um, things. You can import data, manage data, carry out large number of statistical tests, statistical models, um, etc, etc. Notice that some of the menu items are greyed out. This is because we have firstly no data in R at the moment and also we have the wrong type of data. So if we wanted to do um, a one-way ANOVA, we'd have to have a factor level um, variable defined. So, let's actually import some data. We can import some data from um, clipboard, file, anywhere, SPSS, Minitab, Stata, or Excel, which is the one we're going to use. Before we can import any data, we have to say, give a uh, name of a data frame. Um, so, I'm going to just call it my data frame, which seems to be my favorite term for the current data set I'm working with. Okay, then it asks us where to get our Excel spreadsheet from. This Excel spreadsheet contains um, a large number of measurements of different body parts. Notice it's XLS, um, not the latest version, but you can easily save your latest Excel version to XLS within Excel. So here we are. Once it's opened it up, it asks us which is the actual sheet that contains our data. Um, for some unknown reason, you can't move this little uh, window that comes up. Anyway, so we'll choose sheet one. There we are, sheet one. Click OK, and then we'll have our data. Nothing much happens except um, notice that a uh, command was written in the script window and some script was written in the output window. Um, notice it says something like select from sheet one and there we should recognize that my data frame gets the value from sheet one. Notice it says two buttons at the top, edit data set and view data set. If you're clocking the edit data set, um, you'll see all the data entered there. There we are. So we have case numbers, we have age, and a large number of measurements, right down to 252 subjects.
Right, so we've actually carried out quite a lot there. Um, we imported an Excel data sheet. Let's look at how we might import um, an SAV file from SPSS. So we get the same thing, data, import data. This time we choose SPSS data set. Again, we give our frame data frame a name. And then we say, do we want to convert? the value labels to factor levels. Remember in SPSS you can set up value labels for certain variables which also become factor levels. Also you can say the maximum number of, of value labels you want to use from a particular variable. Also notice in the R Commander window that we had the thing called fix my data frame. Fix it just brings up the edit window. So when we clicked on edit data set, basically you could have typed that straight into our fix the data frame you're working with. And that would have brought up that edit window. This is a good way of learning R in fact by using R Commander because it shows you what each of the menu commands produce in terms of R code. Um, and eventually you just can write the R code. Remember, all this is based on my PDF documents, which are available free at my website. So, one getting started with R and R Commander has a whole section on R Commander. How to install it, how to run it, how to edit data sets with it, and how to manipulate data, which is quite interesting. How to merge data sets, cut them um, lengthwise and rowwise. Finally, let's just recap what we have done in this five minute video. Uh, we've seen how to install libraries, remembering to use the additional term dependencies equal true to make sure we get all the uh, additional libraries we might need. We actually specifically installed R Commander, which was a, a nice graphical interface to R, which allowed us to easily import an Excel spreadsheet. Notice we use the XLS version. Um, more recent versions you need to export in Excel first. Also we saw how to import SPSSS. We used um, the fix data set command via the menu option to edit our data. We could have typed that into XR. Um, it just got up the same window. And finally you need to notice that I, although I have a 64-bit Windows system, I actually used the 32-bit version of R to allow me to in, um, import the Excel sheet. If you try and do it with the Windows 64-bit version, you get an error message. Let's just warn you. Bye.